Hey guys, welcome to the channel IF 4.0. This is Ajay. If you haven't watched our part one for racks, do watch it so that you will have a better clarity in this video. So this is our part two in understanding rack properties. So let's begin from slot assignment strategy. Things before this we have already covered in part one. So the slot assignment strategies are basically used to assign the slots based on certain logics you can create or you can assign it based on the options you are available there. So random bay level and slot, random bay level and slot with space, first slot with space. So if you drag the rack from the object properties, the initial default setting will be first slot with space which so this is basically first available basis then we have matching label basis then we have by bay level slot rank so this is basically based on the rank of the bay level or slot and this is based on the id so if you click here on id so you need to enter the id here you need to enter level id here and slot id then whatever part is going to come there it will first check what bay id it needs to go level id it needs to go slot ID and based on that it will be sent it to that if you select rank wise you need to put the conditions here for their rank wise and then the part will be assigned to it and then we have based on matching labels so you can assign labels to each of the slot say this slot is for a type 1 this slot is for type 2 this slot is for type 3 so this condition will check what is the item type and based on that the item will be assigned to the respective slot type. So this is for matching labels. We will do one of the assignment on this for understanding this more detail. But currently we will go ahead by understanding the high level possibilities we do have in this. So we'll keep it first slot with space availability basis then we have slot stacking order so this slot stacking order is basically uh, with respect to a single slot so what does this mean is initially the parts will be filled in x direction once x direction is filled then the next part will be placed in y direction so this is y direction from this corner it will go inside this is y direction plus and then we will have z so how this slot will be filled is the boxes will be first placed in x direction then it will shift one space ahead then x direction then y then x direction once all the uh, boxes are filled in the basement we will have z plus thing happening so i'll just run and show you so if you see this this is how the x is working so this is x direction so you can see another box kept here ahead of that this is x once we are having this area full that is one row for x fill we will have one increment in y and then we will again begin with x so this is how x plus y plus and z plus strategies work if you do it minus this will start from the extreme right of this area if you put minus y the y will be taken at the end and it will be started from that area so this is how you need to put your slot stacking order you can change it based on your requirement then we have storage options in the storage options mark slot with outbound items so what will happen is the basement will be colored in red if the part is going to go out from this area that's all that's what is mark slots with outbound so out the outbound items slot will be colored in red this is what it shows now i'm unchecking it then there is a extend column thing extend column basically it's not it can be used at the top level so if you see this extend columns at the top you can see this columns are been extended for the top self 
so this is how this function will work if you check this in then we have self tilt amount so basically this is mostly used for another types of racks such as gravity and push those racks you need to uh, put what should be the self tilting amount so that the gravity and the pushback will act correctly then we have another option where you can put pick slash place y offset so if you see this operator generally enters into the rack when it is going to put the parts if you are going to enter the offset distance here so if you put the offset distance here say 1 meter 0.5 meter then the operator while loading and unloading will keep a offset of that distance from the rack and it will load and unload the parts this is pick place offset so you can see when i am changing this pick place offset value to 1 you can see what is the distance between the operator and the rack when it is loading and unloading so you can see it is unloading by going near the rack now when i am changing this uh, offset value to 5 you can see the operator puts or drops the box at a distance of 5 meter from the rack and similarly it will work on for loading so it is you saw it has been loading the part from this area but the distance for load and unload will be at offset of 5 meters from the rack so this is that property peak place y offset now I'll change it to 0 I'll reset the model and we'll see another property then we have another property as address mapping now this is the important property basically it is used to send the item based on the address so basically that will be the rack address which will be created based on bay level and slot so the currently the address scheme is none if you put it in default address scheme in it you can put the id here for zone and aisles you can change the values for bay slot here and this is the progress and progression we already saw that is basically the slot stacking order then the start is basically it is used to define the number associated to the base slot levels the stride basically defines how many address you need to skip over when the progressions takes place this is for address mapping then we have another property that is flow now this is basically used to define the flow from the rack to outbound and inbound so there are two options in this flow you can use this as a fixed resource if not you can uncheck this when you are going to use at a fixed resource what you need to do is the maximum content is already coming here in default so this is the maximum capacity what the rack is going to have you can change it whatever number you want then we have minimum dwell time here so this minimum dwell time indicates that whenever a part comes into the rack what should be the minimum wait time that part should have been taking place into the rack before it goes to outbound so if you put here say 10 seconds even if there is a signal for the part to come out and go to the q2 from the rack the part is going to wait minimum for 10 seconds once 10 seconds have been completed the part will be sent it from the rack to q2 so this is minimum dwell time then we have another property that is output we have seen this output property we have it for another object also in the flexim system so this is send to port we have different options available here round robin queue size all those ra random conditional ports you can use those as per requirement use transport we have used this operator to transport the material from the rack so it's use transport there are another properties you can put here custom task sequence we have task executor we have we have object connected to center port there are many possibilities you can use you can put the priorities you can put preemptions if you want to look into, into these details you can check out the details of task executors we have explained these in detail there then we have input properties we have input properties pull pull strategies pull requirements so pulling strategies can also be included here for the rack we can pull it from the list 
we can pull it based on different requirements specific labels ranks into the rack so that possibilities if you want you can check this if you don't want if you want that the queue should work on sending so you want the rack to be worked on push system you just you uncheck this if you want the rack to work on the pull system you can check this and specify your pull logic into the place then we have ports we can specify input central and output ports for the rack as well then we have the triggers for the rack so you can see there on end dwell time on slot entry on slot exit on slot assign these are some of the properties or the triggers which you will not be able to see in another task uh, objects into the flexim so you will only be able to see this in the warehousing equipments such as rack and flooring spaces rest of the triggers on entry on exit you have seen it in another objects as well so this is how the rack modeling works and this is what the properties for the racks are available in the flexim you can modify those based on your requirement and there are many more things which you can do with the help of the warehousing and warehousing analysis into the flexim by doing modeling for warehousing so let me know if you have any questions or improvement points into the comment section do share and subscribe to the channel for such interesting and valuable sessions and videos till then take care enjoy learning enjoy simulating we'll meet into the new interesting video coming up thank you